The uh, question has come up about why you want to have your DHCP MAC address known. That's the Media Access Control address. That's a hardware address that's assigned to every piece of hardware. It's supposed to be unique. I think everyone adopts the standard of making sure they don't overlap with someone else's hardware MAC address. Knowing the MAC address, when a device asks for an IP address on your LAN network, and the advantage to using DHCP is you can take your device to another network somewhere that has a DHCP server on it, you attach it to their LAN local area network, and it will, it will get assigned an address. And the question is, what address does it get assigned? If it is not in an address reservation table, it simply gets an assigned an address that's known to your router as one of the places that it can assign addresses. So let's try to find where that where that's taking place. And in the LAN setup on my router, it says use the DHCP router as a DHCP server and I've set mine up my local address is not that important it's just uh, my router starts here at 1 and so the addresses that are valid for this particular device are from dot .1 to dot .255 so coming down here to the address reservation I'm going to focus on this device 32 the device that's on my LAN that has a uh, pre-assigned address reservation of 172.16.42.32. Now the way I was able to assure that it always gets that address is knowing its MAC address I went and added it to an address reservation table and that was done down here where when you say add a device you're going to say what address do I add it at and you have to know the MAC address and then you give it a device name and then just hit enter and it gets assigned to this collection of addresses that are known to the router and most of the ones that are assigned are under 99. Remember mine went, mine was assigning addresses from 100 to 254 so that if I turned on a device it didn't end up on the same address as this 32 is which is on 32. This avoids an address conflict. You may have seen them on your network where you say you have an IP address conflict. This is a technical detail, but you can afford it. You can avoid it by being sure that when your DHCP server is running, that it only hands out addresses to unknown devices on ports on uh, LAN addresses 100 to 254. And a, and a device with a fixed IP address if you put it in this range right here 100 to 254 it's possible that if that device isn't turned on another device comes along your router says has a DHCP service oh yeah I can assign uh, that address to you it's not being used right now and then you turn on the device that has a fixed IP address in that same block up here you get an address resolution or address conflict so you avoid that by assuring that your fixed IP addresses are below the 100. Good idea. All right. You can also assign devices down here below, which I've done in case this one is not running. I don't want another device to come along and land on dot .32. It's very unlikely because the router knows that that address is reserved, but still it's good practice not to run into that potential problem. So the issue is how do you know what the fixed hardware 
known address is this one that ends with AE81. Just remember that AE81. Well, one way to do it is to uh, is to use a uh, command from the command line called ARP, Address Resolution Protocol. So you go ARP, and there's several things you can do. I'll put a question mark here. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with ARP. But the minus A displays current entries into devices that are on your network. Now, presuming that your radio is on and connected to the LAN, if you did ARP minus A, uh, you may run into this situation where there's several interfaces. I have VMware running on my computer, and it has a set of, uh, anyway, it's a bit complicated, but a, a VMware does some strange things. Let's take a look at this 32. Here it sits. Remember the AE81? Well, ARP found it. It says, oh, okay, you have this thing and it's got an address of AE81 and you could write this down and use this when you assign your DHCP. You could also go up here and let's go to basic on mine and you can see what are the attached devices. I have a bunch of them on my network. And you come down here and you look to see what's on your network. Now remember, mine's already been assigned to 32, but if it hadn't been, oh, there it is, AE81. There's another place to find that address. But devices that are uh, assigned later, like, oh, I don't know, here's an iPad. I didn't give this a fixed IP. It's just got assigned this IP address if it happens to be on. Uh, my wife has one. I have a couple of smart plugs that I'm just letting be assigned a kind of a random address. They communicate back to uh, this morose outfit on their own, so you don't have to do uh, port forwarding and all that stuff. So here are some of the things that are on my system, including my Apple Watch and what have you. These have all been assigned between 100 and 254 by the router, but the things that are low numbered devices are either fixed addresses or they've been assigned by the DHCP server. So how do you assign an address with the DHCP server? Let me go to advanced, go to setup, go to my LAN, and down here I have this DHCP server so what I'm going to do is, uh, if I want to add something down to the bottom, I hit the Add, and I go ahead and add this new device by knowing its hardware address. I know where I want to send it to a place that's not currently in use. And I give it a name, then the name appears in this list. So that's how you assign it. That's why you want to have the MAC address of your device, in this case a radio that's on a LAN port, or just assign it a fixed IP address. And the, what the fixed IP address does is it doesn't require you to, to set up your server to assign it a known address. The disadvantage of fixed IP addresses is if you carry your 7610 to someone else's home or you make some major changes to your system or you change out the router or you reboot the router or something like that that DHCP may end up assigning your 7610 to some address you don't know and then you run into the problem of well how do I get to it from the outside world so now the next question you have is how do you make sure that your router is going to forward external ports to that internal radio? Well, that's where you get into port forwarding. 
and there are many many services here like here's an air video server if I say I want to edit that for example let me come down and edit the service I've named the service name air video server if you come into my network uh, use I let it use both TCP and UDP TCP is a connected protocol UDP is uh, like how you initiate a session with another station the ports that you need to forward for air video are, are this one here and I'm sending it off here to 103 now this looks a little odd but 103 is the computer that's running air video server technicality let me cancel that thing. How about, uh, let me pause this. So hopefully you've got some information you need about why you want that MAC address and maybe you understand why you want to assign a fixed IP address to your LAN port. Just being aware that you've done that so if you take the radio to another location with different a different kind of network setup that the address that's in that radio won't conflict with something that's already on the network or you'll get one of these address conflict notices from Windows and they do pop up from time to time so you gotta be careful of that bottom line DHCP is good for a lot of devices like iPhones, iPads uh, other smart devices, televisions, you name it, and they should be assigned to these addresses that are outside the reserved or in the area of, uh, like in my case, 100 to 254, and then use the ones below that for your devices that are on your network. Good luck with it, and uh, that's it for now. This is Jeff W6FCC on, uh, geez, November 27th already. Have a good holiday, everybody.